Hi, in this video we're going to make a, a review of the GTS Factory documentation. So the GTS Factory documentation, if you click the main menu, you will see like all the contents of the documentation. If you hit the first menu, you will see basically the README, which is the same one you see on GitHub and on PyPI when you get the, uh, when you get that GTS Factory, you can see PyPI. So this is the latest version uploaded to PyPI. This will change as we uh, uh, release new versions of GTS Factory. Another thing you can also do from here, you can also see the you can launch Binder, which basically will create a way for you to play around with GTS Factory notebooks. So this is one of the featured ways. So you can run notebooks on Binder, you can see slides or read the documentation, which are these docs. There's also some YouTube videos that you can watch. Uh, also to show you how to use GTS Factory in a more interactive manner. Uh, so the intro tutorial is basically how, how to get started. So uh, GTS Factory is a code-driven flow, so it requires some basic knowledge of Python. So here we show some introduction to Python. Uh, it's important that you understand some things as class, what's a class, is a function, uh, what's a factory. A factory is basically a function that returns an object. Uh, decorator is basically a function that runs over a function. So here we explain decorators. And we also use list comprehensions and many of the functional programming uh, basically tools. Uh, for example, partial, it's basically a way for you to, to change the default arguments of a function. Uh, another way is to create use compose, which is from another library called tools, tools that I don't know how it's pronounced, but uh, yeah, the idea is that you can concatenate functions uh, like piping. And finally, yeah, just some basic IPython things that you can do when you run this on Jupyter. Then you need to understand Git, then you have to install GTS Factory. Uh, so to install GTS Factory, I recommend to install it through Mamba. And uh, Mamba is like a, a faster version of Conda. And you can download it from here, depending on the OS you are. And uh, there's a video for that on Mac OS. Um, yeah, but the same works on Windows and Linux. So this is works for Windows, Mac, and Linux, 3.7, 3.8, 3.9, and 3.10. I'm currently uh, on 3.10, but I, I tested it. In, uh, we test every day on all the versions and all the operating systems. So once you install GTS Factory, you can also install plugins. So uh, yeah, like some plugins like me require separate installation. Um, and it's explained here. The other thing you can do also is that you can have a key layout integration. You can basically run and it will show directly. Uh, there's a VS Code plugin. And uh, if you want to see some of the tricks of GDF Factory in five minutes, you can learn how to define P cells, basically use auto routing, use 3D rendering. Uh, yeah, and then basically you can see what we have. Then a workflow, we have two kinds of workflows. So we have a layout-driven flow where you define your pieces in Python, you execute the code, and then you hit run. And then we have the Nelly-driven flow where you run it in, in like a file watcher mode. And then basically uh, anything that you change, you will see it on, on the layout. So for the layout-driven flow, uh, the most important thing is to understand the components, basically a canvas. Uh, a component uh, can have a, compo a reference to the components, and every component has can be made of paths, polygons, reference to another component, on an array of references. So these polygons can be different layers. You can add ports to the geometry to connect them. You can basically add basically labels as well in case you wanna have some annotations. You can move references by port, and in the end you will write your GTS. If you want to learn more about reference and port, there's a specific tutorial. There's a specific tutorial for movement. Um, basically, we also have this cell decorator, which basically allows you to basically decorate these uh, functions. The function that returns a component is very typical. It's basically a parametric cell. So depending on the input parameters of this cell, we will return a component with a different name. And that name is unique and depends on the parameters. Uh, so you can see the name of the MZI with band radius is 10. 
if you run it with the the micro and yeah this is kind of like there's also metadata so when you save the component you know what it is and it also has a cache so it doesn't create two components uh, at the same and if they have the same parameter it doesn't create the component the same component twice it just gets it from the cache it's basically a, a LRU cache then we explain the concept of layers there's a specific tutorial on this so I won't go into much detail uh, then you can also define your paths and cross sections so you can basically extrude paths with cross sections to get components um, and this is basically you can co you can concatenate paths and cross section is basically uh, ho how to define a way gate out of a path so you define some layers and some offsets and those layers and offsets can also have transitions you can read more about this and it can be this offset and function uh, and tapers can be basically a, a, fun a value or it can be a function then components you can some basic components here the, f the full component documentation is here uh, these are basically uh, all the components on the generic PDK you can also allow components with hierarchy so out of very simple shapes you can create more complex components and this is the power f uh, of uh, r references uh, we also have a routing function so we can have get route uh, get route from steps uh, we can also have electrical routing functions uh, this is basically how to assemble a reticle, like add some test protocol labels, uh, how to define a PDK. Uh, basically, a PDK is a way for you to register layers, cells, cross sections, and you can get them by the name. Um, so this is very easy to do uh, if you follow this tutorial. And importing PDKs, this is basically in case you get a foundry PDK that's not on GDS Factory, you can basically create your own. Uh, so you just, these are the steps um, and then uh, we also have an LH driven flow tutorial and then we have also uh, a way for you to, to understand like, how, how to define netlist and netlist is basically a place and route there's also a specific tutorial on this so I won't go into much detail but uh, yep, you can see it here uh, and the last part uh, the, uh, we should make a separate video for this because it's pretty lengthy it's basically all the plugins that it has so simulation plugins so it has mode solvers a couple of mode solvers um, it has FTDD and the idea is that we have a common API to run different tools and then we have circuit simulations so these are basically out of the parameters of the FTDD you can actually make the linear, linear circuit solver simulations and if you want to contribute, it's an open source project, so you can just send a pull request, so you git clone the repo, and then you fork a repo onto your user space, and then as long as you test passing, uh, most likely your feature will be merged mm -hmm. in the next version. You can also test the GDF factory PDKs, see the differences. We can also check the change log to understand what are the changes from the last version. You can even click on them and you will see what 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 change so you can see the differences so you can know what happened here in this version and finally and these are components the components are the generic component uh, generic pdk components that you can customize for your specific foundry so there's many components here and i hope that you find them useful and lastly, is the, basically there's two APIs. So there's the general API, which has the geometric construction, which is basically you create a component out of component references or polygons. Uh, you can click on component to see what are the, uh, basically the parameters that the, a component has. Uh, so you can see here all the documentation of component. Component reference, read from YAML. Uh, read from YAML is basically what the netlist driven flow is based on. You can read from NumPy or from GDS. This is a function to define paths, so you can concatenate paths out of straight Euler bands, which are adiabatic bands, spirals, or smooth. Um, uh, it takes a series of waypoints and returns a smooth path. Uh, you also have generic cross sections that you can customize and transitions. 
uh, we have decorators and we have types. Pack is basically for packing components into larger components. It can be packed efficiently or it can be on a grid like uh, with a constant spacing. We also have Kleout DRC, so you can write Kleout DRC rule decks uh, from GDS Factory. Um, and it has also all the simulation plugins like Mode Solver, it's, it's Tidy 3D, MPV, MEEP, Tidy 3D, and Numerical, uh, as well as the circuit servers, as well as Numerical Interconnect. And the, the last API is the routing API, where you can use to see how to define routes. And by, finally is the command line interface. So this is the command line interface you will see when you do something like GF. GF is the GTS factory command line interface. So you will see GF, GDS will have also different menus. So you can div, you can create layer map to your class, merge GTS, show, or write cells. So every submenu has their own setting. So you can see GTS, tool, or YAML. So you can use YAML watch to basically visualize as a file watcher of your knowledge room flow. Okay, I hope you find this useful and, um, and, and helpful. Thank you very much.